we were taught to hate ourselves sure. and to hate things African mm. and to hate identifying with Africanness. Mm. You go to most churches, you hear people say, Ungulungulu ama Israel. Oh, Jesus they, of Nazareth. They forget that if they say God of Israel, yeah. they, it's like saying God of Africa. Africa. If there's so, God of Israel, they certainly have to be God of Africa. Mm. Who is Kamata? Who is Umenzi? Mm. Who is Ramasi? Mm. Is God of Africa? Yes. Because nobody else outside of Africa talk about Kamata. Leave alone that they will talk about Ingo Nyama ya kwa Judah, the land of Judah. Uh, <laughs> and which tribe? Which tribe is Judah? The God of Israel. The God of Israel, right? So this is a problem that I find that. The way we are so colonized, you don't even realize and understand that you are referring to a God who is foreign to you. These are the same people who will say when in their churches, they say, I will serve no foreign God. That time it doesn't look like them in on the wall. Why they say Gwanyabagachu? Why they say Gwanyabagachu? It's a foreign to them. It's a foreign to them. The white Jesus on the wall is foreign to them. It doesn't look like them. So now if you're talking about self-hate, you're talking about mental slavery, you're talking about uh, religious colonization, you're talking about the African people. Spirituality, maybe to round off, uh, taking through us, reminding us what, what? Uh, uh, as you define spiritual, uh, African spirituality. African spirituality, uh, let me reiterate this point sure. by uh, Abel to that day. Um, the temple of the Most High, the temple of the Great Spirit, mm. begins with the human body, I hear you. which houses our life, the essence of our existence. Mm. That uh, Africans are in bondage today because they approach spirituality through religion. Mm. That uh, we must not confuse religion with spirituality. Okay. That uh, spirituality is a network which connects us to the Great Spirit. Mm to the universe and to each other. That religion is a set of rules, regulations, and rituals created by uh, men. Yes. Religion was brought, brought by foreign invaders, con foreigners, invaders, and conquerors to Africa. We, we never had a religion. We don't even have an African word for religion, as much as we don't have an African word for ancestor worship. So we never had a religion. We had things that can be identified as religious practices like prayer rituals all of that but we don't have religion we had a spiritual culture so and we never had a need for religion because and that is why we don't have scriptures in african traditional uh, spirituality or in african spirituality we don't have scriptures we don't have uh, he heretics we don't have sinners we don't have false believers and true believers <laughs> as much as we don't have false god and true god because that is judging another person yeah but how because do... even uh, in, in the same village mm. when it comes to doing um, spiritual activities yeah. or spiritual practice right. even the youngers they practice differently yes according to, to their the revelation of or what they've seen in the spirit, what the spirit realm has communicated with them. Yes. Because it is a rebellion mm. that the spirit come and to me, where the spirit being come to me and tell me how to heal people, how to help people, and then and, and follow the Bible. Yeah. And even the book that you can't prove. Yes. Exactly. So basically what we, we do is we have moved away from our African spirituality mm -hmm. to foreign religion. And our understanding of spirituality is a religion. That is why people will tell you that uh, you don't have African spirituality. Spirituality is universal. But there is a Chinese spirituality. Mm. There is Arab spirituality. Sure. There is Indian spirituality. Sure. And why, why not have an African spirituality? Culture. Traditions. Now, spirituality is the soul of a culture. Um, sure. African spirituality is the soul of the of African, Af culture. Af African culture. African culture. Uh, and when you talk of Africanism, Africanism begins with Africanization. <laughs> now, when we Africanize, central to this process is the African culture. If the African culture is not central to a process of Africanization, mm. then it's like putting a black face on anything, including how we put a black face on apartheid. Yes. 
you see. So you, you see this mask, it is, it is uh, we are putting a human face mm. to reality. Now spirituality is reality. If you are not dealing with reality, you are not dealing with spirituality. Now African spirituality is African reality. If you don't deal with African realities, then you are not dealing with African spirituality. Sure. Simple as that. Spirituality is a reality. If you don't deal with reality, you're not dealing with spirituality. I want us to move on by talking about now we say religion is when people organize you uh, and then regulate you, your spirituality. Yes. I, I like to put it this way also colonize you. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. What is colonize you? It is when I come and teach you my way of living, mm. how I eat, mm. how I approach mm. life. Mm. Then it is when I change your culture. Mm. I change what what differentiates you from me. Mm. So, is it wrong to have a, a, a faith organization? Is it wrong to have a spiritual organization registering um, and, and having some guideline? Uh, not necessarily indoctrination, but having some guideline like any organization, like institutionalizing African spirituality. Yes, yes. it is not wrong because um, it is the organization of your reality. Yes, your spiritual reality. Yes, it has to be organized. It has to be. Otherwise, it is then it's a disorder. Otherwise, it's a it's like an anarchy. Because it's it's like when I go to Sangoma, mm -hmm. some Sangoma will say. Uh, when I come in, will give me house rules. Mm. The take rules of the house. Take off the shoes. Take off the shoes. Mm. And you find that when I go to another one, mm. although the principle is the same, but the approach, the way mm. things are done. Mm. Um, actually, this is, what, that is, this is what we need to do as Africans now, and uh -huh. as, as practitioners of African spirituality. Mm. We need to organize it, we need to institutionalize it, Mm. We need to formalize it so that it can gain respect, so that it can provide direction. Oh, yes. Yeah. For, 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 for example, I, I have a, a practice number mm. on African medicine. Mm. Why that? Because I, I was healing people. Yeah. I didn't need African uh, medicine uh, certificate or whatever recognition. Mm. But because I'm practicing on this earth, mm. So I am not a Western doctor. Mm. I don't have those qualifications. Mm. But at least I know mm. how to put what. And while I lay my hands, because that is not institutionalized, mm. uh, to be recognized in the health center mm. uh, or health uh, sector. Mm. Therefore, I needed, there was a need of the organization that uh, uh, take care of that, that, that life. Exactly. Yes. You see the fallacy that is here is that everything that is disorganized out of all is always called African. Like when you are late, you just say it's African time. It's no <laughs> such thing. Yeah. Um, now, the assumption is that things African are not organized, are not institutionalized. But the truth is, you go to Kemet. Kemet is about institutionalization of African spirituality. Sure. They had different centers Heliopolis, Memphis, Tebes. Uh, all, all Sometimes the, they have different deities. Of course, they they have different deities. Uh, uh, like God, a deity Amen of Ra. rain. Amen Ra was worshipped at Thebes. You know? yeah. uh, Akhenaten came in with Aten. Usually, this Christian reading of Kemet, they will always say Akhenaten introduces is the first one to introduce monotheism. Even when you go to Google, you check about African religion. You know, yeah. There's a point where they're going to tell about Akhenaten is the first one to introduce. Uh, uh, monothe monotheism. Mm -hmm. I believe in one God. Um, there were many, just like in African sp uh, 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 spiritual culture, mm -hmm. um, we have many, many deities, but these deities are different essence of the same thing. Like in Islam, they talk about there are 99 uh, names of Allah mm -hmm. or 99 attributes of Allah. Mm -hmm. So I like to say we have the 3,000 attributes of the one. We don't even say one God in Africa. We talk about the oh. one. We don't have the one God concept. Yes. And because in, the minute you say one, you're going to have a problem because God is unknown. 
you cannot mathematically qualify and quantify God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so once you start to mathematically yes. reduce God to a number, that's that why God. there will always be a debate with the people who believe in, 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 in Judaism or Christianity, Christianity or Islam. Or Islam. Mm -hmm. There will always be, be debate. Uh, some will say Jesus is God, some will say Jesus is not. Even within the Christianity, mm -hmm. man, yeah. you don't know what to believe. Yeah. Even those who say the Bible, I ask them, which Bible are we talking about? Because there are three types of main Bible, mm -hmm. which is uh, Roman with 73 books, mm -hmm. and the, the Protestant with, with, with 66, 66 books, mm -hmm. and uh, with the, the Ethiopian Bible with uh, 81 books. Mm -hmm. Which one God will use now to judge? All of these people, they call themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. Can you see, already they are divided mm -hmm. by having three words of God. God. And, and then come to the 66 book, you'll find, I don't know how many denominations, about, about... About 666 denominations of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Christianity and, alone. Christianity alone. And now, again, I've read several of these Bibles. Uh, Within they, one of a uh, denomination, yeah. they are divided. They are divided themselves. Even divided even down, they baptized, divided down, you know. Yes. Now, even with this Bible, the Ethiopian Bible, on Psalm 72, when they say... The people of the wilderness. Whenever you see the people of the wilderness, Psalm 72, Matthew 12, all of that, it says the Ethiopians. It doesn't say people of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now, even these Bibles themselves, they differ. Okay. Different, different version, different interpretations. Even the English Bible, the 66 Bible, uh, books Bible, wow. they differ. Like the Gideonites. The King James version of the Bible, the New International version of the Bible, all of that they they, they differ. Some they have uh, less verses. <laughs> some they have long verses. <laughs> some they have more verses. Some they have, yeah. Some they have verses that are extracted that are, that you don't find them like when they used to say Ethiopians they say Kushites, mm -hmm. and then some they no more say Ethiopians and Kushites they say something different. Contradiction. Yes, we call contradiction. Yes, contradictions. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I want us to get into now. Everybody grow in what you are doing. Hmm. Would you say you are in the journey of reshaping? Yeah, we talk about reshaping your mentality. Hmm. Would you say you are in reshaping? It means there is a shape. Yeah. So I feel. I need to reshape. reshape. In, in, in business, they say rebranding. Mm -hmm. yeah, the brand was there, but you rebrand, you adjust to the time or according to what you know, mm -hmm. or you see advantage. For example, I, I, I'm, I'm what I always call now paradigm shift. I'm still a plantian, mm -hmm. but there was a, a plantian who was not detox, uh, detoxed by uh, uh, Christian mm -hmm. or from Christian uh, indoctrination. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was very toxic. Basic, yeah. uh, I was still using their term, doing things mm -hmm. like them. Mm -hmm. You know, then it came the time where I said, no, mm -hmm. enough is enough. Mm -hmm. So I call that paradigm shift. Paradigm shift, it mean mm -hmm. I used to think this way. Now I don't think they do it. I change the way I think, the way I look at them. For example, when I was a Christian, I used to think Jesus is the only way. The way, the truth, and, and the light. There is no way to God without him. So without Jesus, you're going to hell. And uh, you, you, you start to think Abraham is in hell. Because he lived before Jesus. Before Jesus. Moses is in hell. Job is in hell. Well, they will say, well, when you wake up, mm. uh, the Bible say, all who were dead, dead before they, they, they wake like up and them. walk in the seat. Mm. You talk about myth. Mm. You talk about legendary mm. story. Mm. You talk about fiction. Mm. That's the fiction. Yes, that's fiction. Imagine people who die their bone for uh, about uh, 4,000 years. years. Mm. And some of them 4,000 years ago. Mm. They wake up and walk on the seat. Mm. Now, let me ask you a question. Go to Rome. Mm. Rome. Rome. See if you'll find what they're talking about. Mm. Can you find the earthquake that happened when Jesus died on the cross? No. No. There's no, there's no archaeological. Let evidence. alone that they say Jesus died, mm. he, he was taken to the tomb. Mm. In that day, mm. I, I, I've done a research. Mm. No way. When you are hanging on the cross, mm. 
special for, for the sins that uh, high treason that uh, Jesus committed. Yeah. The people who were held on the cross, one of the judgment thing, the main thing was to embarrass you. Mm. They keep you on the cross oh. until you are eaten mm. by birds. Mm. You die there on the cross. Mm. Not to they how how how, how he became uh, given the privilege of being buried. Yes. There was no decent burial. Mm. And be let alone that you were not close to the city. Mm. You were somewhere in the desert, in the mountain there. Mm. Outside of and women were not allowed there. Mm. But how did these women went to the cross? Mary Magdalene them. <laughs> and you don't know when they went to the tomb, who oh. first saw Jesus in the tomb, and how many people, how many angels were in the tomb. Sometimes it will be one man, sometimes it will be two, sometimes it will be two angels, sometimes... Um, the Bible is full of contradiction. The Bible is mythology, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, allegories, mm -hmm. is um, fairy tales mm -hmm. at best, mm -hmm. and then it's a collection of other myths from previous sources like uh, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, and Assyrians. Mm -hmm. But moreover, I think the mistake that most Christians are doing is literal interpretation. Sure. Literalist Christians. Ah. Now, the literalist Christian and the literalist interpretation of the Bible, it is what, what led to this, this whole Christian madness going on with the Bible, that you begin to believe things that are not scientific. And it's not to tell you that uh, um, science and religion don't go together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because when, when religion uh, fail to make sense of reality, it resorts to mysticism. It resorts to, uh, to me. To say, I believe it. Uh, you can explain and say and prove to them. Oh, uh, let me make an, one example. According to uh, 